Hi everyone, this is the last topic I'm going to discuss in this chapter, chapter 8, and the concept is uh, something called bond enthalpy. So first let's kind of discuss what that means. Um, remember that the topic of ionic bonding, I discussed this term called the lattice energy, which basically is the energy that um, is needed to break the uh, an ionic interaction, right? So it basically represents the strength of ionic bonds. Now what we want to do is have a similar quantity that measures the strength of covalent bonds because we've been talking talking about covalent bonds obviously so we want to know how much is the strength of a covalent bond. Now uh, the term bond enthalpy is what we usually use when we talk about covalent bond strength. Okay, And this is again something that's measurable. Um, the bond enthalpy term itself is defined as the change in enthalpy that happens when you take uh, a bond and break it in one mole of a gas molecule. So for example, you can uh, have this reaction, H2 going to 2H, so in other words a molecule going to two atoms, and the energy that happens, or the enthalpy change I should say, that, that occurs as a result of this process is what we refer to as the bond enthalpy. So it's given a symbol delta H, you know, at standard condition for the bond breaking. And bond breaking requires energy. It's an endothermic process, so it has a positive value, 436.4 kilojoules per mole of this reaction. Now, another way to write this, of course, in a, in a, in a way that actually emphasizes the bond is to write it as a Lewis structure. So you have HH, right, which is the H2 gas forming 2H atoms, so I'm purposefully separating them to kind of get you to see, you know, that that energy is actually for measuring this process of taking apart that bond, and that costs you energy, so it's an endothermic process. Um, just to kind of give you, a, a, you know, an idea of how much these energies range, we look at a table that looks like this. This is kind of a typical table you'll see um, for average bond enthalpy. So you'll see that, you, you know, from different sources, um, you might see, you know, slightly different values, but they, they all have similar trends. So you can see that all of these are single bonds. You can see here that they have double bonds and triple bonds listed separately. And as you can see here, the values for the multiple bonds are higher on average than the values for the single bonds. And you should expect that because the multiple bonds, you know, the, the more bonds you have, basically the more electrons you have between the two nuclei. And as a result, you know, if you want to take that bond apart, if you were to break them, it's going to take you a little bit more energy to do that. So that's what you see here. So let's look, for example, at the carbon-carbon um, bond. Okay, so we see carbon-carbon single bond is about 347. Carbon-carbon double bond is about 614, and carbon-carbon triple bond is about 839, okay? So clearly, as you have more uh, electron density between the two carbon nuclei, you get uh, higher energy when you, uh, you know, to break that bond, okay? Uh, one thing I want to point out here, which I'm not going to discuss here, but later on I'll talk about it, is the fact that, as you see, this value is 347 and this value is 614 when you have a double bond. It's not exactly twice that number, right? Twice this number would be around 690 or something. And so um, that's something we will discuss when we get to the next chapter when we talk about uh, double bond and uh, triple bond in the context of the valence bond theory because it turns out that the second bond and third bond you add is not exactly as strong as the first bond that you have. Okay, so there's two different types of bonds that we'll talk about. Um, Another thing I want to point out is just the relationship between bond enthalpy values and bond length, okay? Again, here's the, your uh, single, double, and triple bonds uh, for the carbon-carbon bond. And what you can see here is that uh, the value of the energies are listed here. And you can see that the length of these bonds gets shorter and shorter, okay? So single bond is the longest, 154 picometers, and then triple bond is only 120 picometers. The reason for that is because, uh, as you can, you know, see again, the fact that you have more electron density between the two nuclei, the electrons are negatively charged, the nuclei are positively charged, so the more electron density you have, the more the two nuclei are going to be closer together, which make their bond distance shorter, okay? You see this with other examples of multiple bonds as well. 
So what is the use of bond enthalpy? Okay. Well, before we talk about that, I want to kind of highlight one thing first. Okay. In comparison, if you look at these values in comparison to the lattice energy, which is the strength of ionic bonds, they are lower. Okay. Now you might not remember the values of lattice energies that we talked about. Uh, we did a couple of examples of them. Uh, but if you go back to those videos where I talk about lattice energy, you'll see that the lattice energy values tend to be above a thousand kilojoules per mole on average. Okay, uh, whereas these values you can see they're lower than a thousand kilojoules. In fact, most of them are much lower than a thousand kilojoules per mole, uh, except for the triple bond in this case. So um, it's really rare that you have covalent bonds that are that strong. Most of them are fairly weak, and they're in this range. Okay, so that tells you that an ionic bond is stronger than a covalent bond. And the reason is because in the ionic bond you have this full interaction between a positive and a negative ion. So there's a full electrostatic interaction, whereas in the, in the covalent bond it's this uh, sharing of electrons, so it's not as strong. Okay. Now let's talk about how these bond enthalpy values can be useful for us in calculating enthalpy of reaction. Um, we talked about how to calculate enthalpy of reaction back in the thermochemistry chapter. So we talked about the fact that you can use, you know, if you have a series of reactions that are given to you and you can somehow rearrange those reactions in such a way to give you, when you add them up to give you the target reactions, we can use Hess's law basically to get to the enthalpy of a particular reaction. We can also use, remember, the enthalpy of formation in order to be able to get to the delta H of a reaction. Now we have a third method to get to the delta H of reaction. This is your bond enthalpy calculation. If you think about a reaction, right, let's say you have reactants here, okay, in this green line, and it's going to products. And we know the products, let's say, is lower in energy than the reactants, and we want to know what is this value, the delta H of reaction, right? So remember, we, we kind of use this type of diagrams also in uh, the thermochemistry chapter when we talk about Hess's law. So when you have reactants, you want to calculate this, you think about it, what is a reactant composed of? Well, it's a bunch of molecules, but what are the molecules composed of? Well, a bunch of atoms, right, that are bonded together. So, if I want to uh, go from reactants to products, one possible path that I can take is to take the reactant, break them all apart into atoms, and then reassemble those atoms uh, in such a way that create my products. Okay, so bond them in such a way that create my products. So for example, if I have, you know, let's say a molecule called A2, where there's a bond between uh, an A atom and another A atom, and I have that react with another molecule called B2, where there's a bond between B and B, and I want to make a product called AB, where there's a bond between A and B, I can basically take the A2 and the B2 and break them into atoms of A's and B's and then make a new bond between A and B together to create my product, okay? But what is the energy quantities that correspond to those paths? Well, it's really just, if you think about it, the breaking of the bond is just the sum of the bond enthalpy, right? Because the bond enthalpy is the energy needed to break a bond, so then the re uh, the enthalpy of the the energy needed for this process of taking a reactant to in molecule form to its atoms is just the sum of all the bond energy or bond enthalpy that you have for all the different bonds you have in the reactant molecules. And then when you make the products, what happens? Well, you're making new bonds now, okay? So it's exactly the opposite, okay? The opposite, remember, in thermochemistry, we would say that's the negative in this case, of the bond energy values, right? Because if you go this way, you go up, you get the bond enthalpy values. When you go down, you get the negative of the bond enthalpy values. So when we put this and this together, when we add these two numbers together, the ones that's shown in the gray arrows, we get this orange arrow, which is our delta H of reaction. So we add this plus that. So what is the addition of this? Well, it's just going to be delta H of the reaction is going to be the sum of the bond enthalpy of the reactants plus the negative of the sum of the bond enthalpy of the products, which of course is just going to be negative sum of bond enthalpy of products. Okay, 
So that's basically what it is. That would be the equation you're going to need to use in order to calculate delta H of a reaction if you have bond enthalpy values available to you. I want to point out that this equation is slightly, it's slightly, you know, it's different from the one we use for delta H formation because in delta H of formation we actually use the sum of um, products minus reactants for the delta H formation values. The reason for that is because the two reactions, the, the two energy, you know, the two different enthalpies, formation enthalpy and bond enthalpies, are defined exactly opposite from each other. One is the breaking, the other one is the forming. Okay, so that's why you have this uh, flipping of the symbols. But you just need to kind of remember what, which one is appropriate to use in which situation. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to work through an example of how to use this uh, in the context of an actual reaction.